I'm Alex Dykes, and today we're taking a look at the all-new 2013 Toyota Avalon. Now this is the close sister ship to the Lexus ES350 and ES308, because the Lexus ES is no longer a Camry-based vehicle, instead it's an Avalon-based vehicle. Up front we have a more chiseled nose than the last generation Avalon. We have all new LED light pipes and an all new headlamp arrangement as well. Really very little of this vehicle other than the drivetrain is shared with the last generation Avalon. And the one part of the drivetrain that isn't shared is that all new Avalon hybrid. The designers were obviously following that latest trend in four door sedans which is to design them to look sort of like four door coupes. Although at least Toyota doesn't call the Avalon such. We have a fairly sloping rear windshield and we have a fairly short trunk lid as a result. I think that the overall rear end styling of the Avalon is more pleasing to my eye than the current Lexus ES. Although I do kind of like the Lexus spindle grille, the Avalon is definitely a little bit more demure, a little bit less look at me. Since our Avalon is the limited edition, we have dual exhausts well integrated into the rear bumper. Under the hood you'll find the same two engine options as that Lexus ES. Things start out with this 3.5 liter 268 horsepower V6 mated to a six speed front wheel drive automatic transaxle. That's borrowed from the Toyota Camry as well as the Toyota Camry Hybrid's 200 system horsepower hybrid synergy drive system, which uses a 2.5 liter Atkinson cycle four cylinder engine and of course Toyota's hybrid synergy drive transaxle. The interior of the Avalon has been completely redesigned for 2013 and it's largely why a number of reviewers have been saying they prefer this Toyota Avalon to the Lexus ES. I'm definitely one of those reviewers and here's why. Because in the Lexus ES the entire dashboard is injection molded and then stitched. So you heard me right there, they just injection mold the entire dashboard, they injection mold fake seams like you see in this tiny bit of the Avalon dashboard right here, they injection mold it putting fake seams in it and then they run over it with a hand sewing machine. So they are definitely hand stitching it in a way in the Lexus ES but it's a bit of false advertising if you ask me because the dashboard isn't multiple pieces of anything being stitched together, it's one piece of something that has then had stitches put in it by a sewing machine guided by hand. On the flip side we have this Toyota Avalon and all these beige portions of the Avalon interior on the doors, on the dashboard, all the way across here as you can see, these are multiple pieces of actual pleather fabric and they are actually stitched by a sewing machine to hold them together. It's really obvious when you look at them side by side and that's available here in the Avalon because this bit is of course stitched like that, multiple pieces stitched together and then right up here on this instrument cover we have the injection molded bit with stitching right on top of the injection molding. The Avalon designers definitely took more styling risks on this cabin than the Lexus designers did with the Lexus ES. That's something that I appreciate as well. Over here we have this uh, somewhat interesting looking side window defogger vent. It's definitely an architectural feature of the dashboard. It's very large, it's very bold. We have a lot of chrome going on in the dashboard. We have large expanses of fake wood, although the fake wood does look pretty good. We have a very nice steering wheel essentially shared with the Lexus ES. That is, uh, the rim is very similarly designed, although the button modules and the airbag modules are different. The stitched pleather work continues all the way across the passenger side airbag and then all the way across the door as you can see. Now as is all the latest rage in cars these days, we have touch buttons for our climate as well as our infotainment system. Because this system uses touch buttons, you won't find a Lexus remote touch controller down here in the dash like you will find in the Lexus ES. Instead you'll find more conveniently located cup holders as you can see here, rather than having one up here and one over there as you would in the Lexus ES. Right here you'll see our heated and cooled seat controls, and under here you can see we have two power ports and the USB and auxiliary input for the radio. If you opt for the optional add-on package, you can get a wireless charging mat right here in the center console, although there aren't too many devices that support it. Getting in and out of the Avalon is pretty easy, and that's because although the Avalon has this coupe-like profile, they have cut fairly large door openings. Step over height isn't too bad in the Avalon either. This rear seat is a little bit close to the floor for adults, and a little bit close to the floor for my personal taste. As you can see, a little bit of room there between my thighs and the seat bottom cushion. Although the seat back angle is fairly good, and I do have a decent amount of headroom back here. Now our particular model is equipped with the sunroof, and that does restrict headroom just a teeny little bit here in the back. 
but because the Avalon is so long, that, uh, that reduction in headroom doesn't really start till right about here, if you can see that in the video. So for most people, it's not going to cause too much of a problem in the back. Moving over to the middle seat, which is relatively comfortable, of course not as comfortable as these two outboard seats, I still have a decent amount of headroom at six feet tall, more than the average vehicle for sure. And compared to the Chrysler 300, there's almost no center hump here because of course this is a front wheel drive vehicle. That means that it's an awful lot more comfortable to fit five people in the Toyota Avalon than the Chrysler 300. People in the rear of our limited model also get heated seats as well as a three zone climate control system. We also get a center armrest with fake wood trim and two cup holders. One option that Toyota deleted for 2013 that made me a little sad are the reclining rear seat backs. They were manual in the old Avalon and they were optional, but I really did like them. Unlike most cars, the trim on the doors doesn't get worse as you go rearward. This is exactly the same setup as the front door. We have a soft touch upper, this stitched pleather middle, and a stitched pleather armrest. Large trunks are getting a little bit hard to find in America, but the Avalon still delivers one. This is the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight. So you can see you can fit quite a number of them in the trunk fairly easily. You can also fit a journalist in the trunk with two or three of those bags, you know, in case you don't like this review and you decide to just off me and throw me in here. Now under this hatch you will find a real honest to goodness spare tire. Not a full size, it's still a donut, but at least it's better than a can of fix a flat. In the center of our dashboard we have a 7 inch color touchscreen LCD, and that's because we're in an Avalon Limited. All other versions of the Avalon get the 6.1 inch, which is one inch smaller, Toyota display audio system with or without navigation. If you'd like to know how that system operates, then you can click over to our Toyota Tacoma video because the software that drives that system is completely different from this system. If I'm honest, I like that system just a bit more than I like this system. The display is a little bit smaller, but I think that some of its uh, operations and modes are a little bit more intuitive, especially the menu system in that display audio system. Now, this seven inch touchscreen that we have here has touch buttons on either side of the display, and these are shortcut options for setup, for your phone, entering destination, taking you back to that map, over to our info and our app screen, because of course this system does have smartphone app integration that works with your Android phone or with your iPhone 5 like I have right here. Over here on the media tab, we have access to our USB, our iPod, our Bluetooth audio, and our auxiliary input. There's also a CD option in this system, and you can see this display flips over. To close it, you close it like that. That's also how you would update the navigation software in the system, is through that slot there. Over on the radio tab, we have XM satellite radio, and of course we have the usual AM and FM radio as well. Over here we have a track up and down buttons, our volume and power button, and our tune and scroll button over here. The media navigation screen should look fairly familiar to you if you've used any recent Toyota or Lexus products, as all of their upper end navigation systems have the same interface. We have full access to our playlists, our artists, our albums, our songs, etc., through this screen. And the responsiveness of the system is pretty good because all of, all of that data is actually downloaded from your device and then cached in this particular system. But in addition to that interface there, what's new for this here is the voice command ability to uh, use voice commands to navigate After your music read, library. Say a shortcut menu command. Say help at any time for additional instructions. Play music. Play music. Say a music command. Play artist. Pardon? Say a music command. Play artist. Play artist. Say the artist name. Toby Keith. Toby Keith. Is that correct? As you can see, you do have the option of touching buttons in that voice command interface. And you would also have noticed that in that, that voice command interface, the option for play song was not available. And that's because my iTunes library has more than about 3,000 songs in it. And this system is not capable of voice commanding specific tunes from your library if your library is that large. Although you do still have that option for album and artist commands. Below the infotainment screen, we of course have the touch button climate control system. It's a dual zone climate control in our Avalon Limited. Touch buttons are becoming all the rage in the luxury and near luxury set. And these buttons are fairly responsive and do work very well. So you can see the display dims there, highlighting the particular option that you're adjusting at the moment. Out on the road, the Avalon drives like a large front wheel drive American sedan, something that I've always had a soft spot for since I've owned two Chrysler LH series cars in the past. 
268 horsepower under the hood, of course, with a six-speed automatic transmission that took our Avalon from zero to 60 in just under six and a half seconds. That's pretty good for a vehicle of this size, and it's a little bit better than the Chrysler 300S with its 280 horsepower V6 and that eight-speed rear-wheel drive transmission. With moderately soft springs, a long wheelbase, and a well-tuned chassis, the Avalon delivers a very composed, very civilized ride. It's very different than the ride in the Chrysler 300S, however. The 300S is more Germanic, more muscular feeling, uh, definitely has a bit more road feel, feels a little bit tighter, a little bit more precise, and of course has rear-wheel drive driving dynamics. Compared to the Lexus ES350, the Avalon certainly holds its own. It actually corners better than the ES350, and that's thanks to both being lighter as well as having wider rubber. In terms of overall comfort, the ES350 and the Avalon are very similar because they share very similar uh, seating positions. The seat itself is very similar, actually. The inner workings of the seat are pretty much identical between the Avalon and the ES350, meaning in terms of driver fatigue and driver comfort, they're pretty much the same. When you put your pedal to the floor, the Avalon does have that definite front wheel drive feel with a little bit of torque steer, but it is very well controlled in the Avalon, as you would find in most modern Buicks with their advanced hyper strut suspension. The Avalon runs between $2,500 and $4,500 or so cheaper than the Lexus ES350. Now, for that price, you get essentially the same vehicle. You get the same drivetrain, same engines, of course. You get the same seats in the vehicle, the same amount of interior room. You don't get real wood trim, you don't get the dealer experience that Lexus has been known for, and you don't get the slightly longer warranties that Lexus is known for as well. However, you do get a nicer interior in my opinion, you get a slightly easier to use navigation system, and of course, you get a cheaper car overall. Again, I'm Alex Dykes, and that's been our quick take at the 2013 Toyota Avalon. If you'll take my advice, you'll just cross that Lexus ES off your shopping list, and you'll put the Toyota Avalon there instead. And that's mostly because I'm kind of cheap and $25 to $4,500 is a decent chunk of change to be saving on a vehicle that I personally find nicer on the inside, a little bit easier to use, and in almost every other aspect is essentially the same vehicle. We of course don't get that Lexus logo on the front, and that is important to a decent number of people, so those people might still want that Lexus instead. Now compared to something like the Chrysler 300, I think I might take this Avalon over the 300 some days of the week. That 300 definitely has the better driving dynamics with its rear wheel drive setup, definitely handles a lot nicer, but it's not quite as large as this Avalon. And of course, owing to Chrysler and Toyota's reliability histories, you can expect this Avalon to be more reliable in the long term.